Hello, my beautiful garden. I'm Uncle Icky, and I'm back once again to shower you all with more tales of Icarus past. This is a three-part Icarus story time series that's going to focus on my very tragic, very dramatic, very not-so-fantastic tale of my nine-month incarceration in the years 2009 through 2010. This is episode one. That's going to focus on me getting put into the system, being put on probation, and how I fucked that shit up worse than George W. Bush did to the World Trade Center. Then there's episode two, which is me going to jail, all my fun experiences there, going to court, getting sentenced. Then there's episode three, Revenge of the Shit, the all-anal final chapter. And that's me going to and experiencing the Arizona Department of Corrections. So let's all jump in our time machine. A long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I was a really bad kid. Growing up, you know, I had to fight my whole life through, proving myself to my peers. Um, I've always had this very rebellious attitude towards the world, kind of like Scarface, the world is yours, fuck authority type of shit. And it just kind of snowballed in this giant ball of delinquent. Right Now, my dad was a cop back in the day, so when I was getting arrested for shit, which was a good number of things, um, I would always get a slap on the wrist, you know? Cops look out for other cops and their families, apparently, so they would just kind of let me off. I was getting arrested for, like, criminal damage because I thought I was some hot shit graffiti artist. Um, I was a real hot-headed motherfucker, so if I thought you were disrespecting me, we would rustle and tussle, bro. So I was getting arrested for assault from kids that would call the cops after I beat their ass and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, nothing ever really happened. And then in the back of my mind, that made me feel immortal. Like, yo, dude, I can do whatever the fuck I want to do. Now, ironically, the thing that put me in the system for good and kind of fucked me in the ass wasn't even my fault. So this is all going on, right? I'm a fucking about 16 years old, fucking... I had a switchblade, right? Not one that like swivels out, but one that like shoots out, right? Like it's kind of like a fucking box cutter. You hit the switch and it, and then you pull it back and it comes back out, right? I don't know how this thing ended up in my backpack one day, but sure enough, as fate would have it, it fucking ended up in my backpack. And I went to school. I don't remember what fucking class it was, but the teacher was like, hey, Icarus 480. Um... I don't have that assignment. You can still get credit for it, but you have to turn it in at the end of the period. I'm like, oh, Mrs. Bitch, I have that assignment. Let me go ahead and grab that for you. So I start digging through my bag. I literally, my bag was full of shit, so I couldn't fucking find it. I'm looking, I'm opening it, you know, looking at it in the light. Out falls my switchblade. In my mind, once it falls, I'm thinking, what the hell is that? And then 0. 0.2 seconds later, I'm like, oh, fuck, that's my knife. How the fuck did it get in there? And I grabbed it, threw it back in. I'm like, oh, shit. So that spiked some interest in her mind. So she says to me, what was that? I have no idea. Oh, I found the paper. Here, here you go. And she's like, okay, well, what was that? It looked like a, uh, like a clip to a gun. I'm like, oh, no. And I pulled it out and was like, like, it's just my comb. And I put it back in. She's like, okay. And she like walked off, turned around, was like, well, let me see it. I was like, no, like, you don't want to touch that. Like, uh, I'm like obviously guilty. So we get in an argument going back and forth. Give me it. No, give me it. No, give me it. No, give me it. No, I'm going to call security. I'm like, tell him I said hi. So she goes and calls security. I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I have a fucking knife. So I pull it out of my backpack and I have this little pocket. If anyone remembers like the pants, like on your calf, you have like a little mini pocket. God knows what it was used for, but it was on a bunch of pants in the early 2000s. So I fucking throw it in there and then I'm like, all right, cool. Like whatever uh like i'll be all right you know what i'm saying so security comes they take me to the office they're walking and <clears throat> the security guard's kind of in front of me right Just doo -doo -doo -doo. and i kind of slow down behind her now there's a trash can that's coming up i grab the knife and i drop it in the trash can but as fate would fucking have it the goddamn thing was empty so all you hear is Kudunk! and then the security guard turns around and says what the hell is that I'm like, I, have, I don't know, dude, fucking rats or something. How old is this building? It's fucking trippy. She says to me, no, it's not a rat, and walks up and looks in the garbage and pulls out the only thing in it, which is obviously my switchblade knife. She's like, oh, what do we have here? I'm like, yo, that ain't mine. You found that in the fucking garbage. I didn't, it's not me, dude. She says to me, smile, you're on candid camera, obviously. Fucking security footage can see me throw the goddamn knife in there. I'm like, yeah, that's not mine. She's like, well, we're going to pull the cameras, uh, check it out. All right, cool. Takes me to the office. 
So now I'm fucked, right? But I'm not too worried. You know, my dad's a cop. I'll get off this shit. No problem whatsoever. Go to the office. Principal up pulls me in the office and he says, yeah, we reviewed the camera. We can see that you dropped that in there. Like, you're in deep shit. So I tell him, you know what, dude? Like, I want to be completely straight up with you. Like, I did not intentionally bring that. That is mine. I did drop that in the fucking garbage, obviously. But that's not mine. Or, I mean, I didn't mean to bring that, dude. Like, I don't know how that ended up in my backpack. Like, I had no idea that was even there. And if that didn't fall out of my bag, like, I would have went the whole day without knowing about it. And when I cleaned out my bag when I got home, I would have found it and been like, oh, my God. But seriously, dude, this is like a complete misunderstanding. So he says, okay, well, that may be. But, you know, um, regardless, you had a weapon on school ground. So, um, you know, we're going to have to do something about this. And I'm like, okay, well, what, are you going to suspend me, dude? And he's like, nope. Hello, Mr. or Officer oink oink dude walks in there's a cop and i'm like oh shit really man we're really gonna go down this route you're gonna arrest me take me to the downtown and then you're gonna tell my parents and then i'm gonna get in trouble and then we're gonna repeat this process a little later cop's like all right dude so go ahead put your hands behind your back man you have the right to remain silent everything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law all right, so we go downtown. You know, he questions me. He's like, so this is your knife? I'm like, yes. And look, I had no idea it was in my backpack. I literally don't know how it got in there. This and that, trying to talk my way out of it. Look, dude, like, I wouldn't do that. My dad's a cop, man. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't maliciously bring a, a knife to school. And he's like, okay, this and that. Leaves, talks to my dad, and uh, comes back and says, all right, well, you need to sign this. Like, you have a court date. We're not going to send you to jail right now, but you do have a court date where you're charged with a Class three felony having an automatic weapon at school. I'm like, what? I don't know. What the fuck, dude? I didn't bring an AK to fucking school. Like, it's not, what, a Tech 9? It's not an automatic weapon. It's a knife. He's like, because it shoots out and you can pull it, retract it, it falls into a different class. So it's, it's technically having an automatic weapon at school. So I'm like, dude, I gotta go to court for this shit, bro. Like, what the fuck? Sure enough, like, uh, my parents are pissed. And I had to go to court. My mom's, you know, playing it out to me. Like, you're in deep shit. You have a felony charge. Like, we can't help you anymore. Like, there's nothing we can do to help you. You're probably gonna go to jail. I'm like, whatever. Court date's like maybe two, three weeks away. Um, so we go, you know, my first time going to court, I'm all dressed up in my, you know, fucking button-up shirt, you know, hair all fucking combed up and stuff. And my mom, the whole way, is, you know, I, she was doing what I thought was scaring me straight. In reality, she was really telling me some shit. Like, dude, you might be in some deep shit right now. Like, you might get locked up. When you go to court, you probably are going to go to jail. Like, oh, mom, that's not going to happen. Like, whatever. So we go to court. You know, I'm there with a bunch of other, you know, people. They're all getting their charges read. One by one, the court is slowly emptying. And then it's just me, you know, it's maybe me and like three other people. My mom starts freaking out, like turns to my dad and I can hear her say shit like, they're saving him for last because they're going to detain him. I know they're going to detain him. They're going to take him in. Now I start to like get nervous, like, oh shit, like, is this really about to go? Am I really going to go to jail right now? Like, what the fuck? Sure enough, we're the last people in the courtroom and I'm now I'm fucking sweating bullets, dude. They call, um, can we get a uh, 480 Icarus to the stand, please? So I go sit down next to this public defender that looks like fucking the female version of Skeletor. Um, sits down, they read my name. Uh, okay, Icarus 480, date of birth, uh, April 19th, 1943. I'm like, yeah, that's me. And I'm like, okay, cool. Um, so the judge turns to the prosecutor and he asks her, uh, do you want to have him detained? Is that why? And she's like, no, we don't want to have him detained or anything. However, he does have uh, a lot of charge, you know, a lot of prior arrests, uh, none that, you know, really stuck through. Um, we want to put him on house arrest, uh, preceding the court or whatever. So I'm like, oh, shit, I'm going to be on house arrest. And then he's like, you know, agrees and says, OK, look, uh, Mr. 480, we're going to place you on house arrest uh, during the duration of this trial. You are to um, complete a drug test every week. You are not to leave your house unless you're with your parents or you're going to school. Um, don't break the law, asshole. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, whatever. You know, that was hell on its own because I went home and my, oh, they also kept my cell phone for me. So I was had no access to a cell phone. Like, oh, whatever. I'll just lay in bed and text these chicks. No, that's definitely not happening. 
uh, take my cell phone. My parents wouldn't let me watch TV. I couldn't get on the internet, no video games or anything like that. Literally, all I had to do was yard work. I'm like, all right, cool. This is better than getting raped in the ass in jail. So this goes on, you know, I go through court and, you know, the, they request a continuance and fucking this and that. And I pled guilty, yada, yada, yada. So skip forward about maybe a month later, I'm at my sentencing and now I'm pro- I'm pretty fucking scared, dude. Like I'm legit probably going to go to jail. Like I have a felony charge and like, yo, this ain't cool. So I go, uh, you know, get sentenced and the judge sentenced me to one year of intense probation service, IPS, which as us convicts like to abbreviate it in prison soon because the stipulations of this shit are a bitch, bro. So I had to be either working or in school. If I wasn't, if I didn't have a job and I wasn't in school, I had to be doing community service. If I didn't get at least 40 hours of community service a week, I get locked up. Now, I get drug tested every week or like two times a week, which really didn't matter because I was, you know, nailed to the X straight edge. So it was like whatever to me. I could not leave my house. I could not get suspended from school. I could not talk back to my parents. Like, really, nigga? Like, what the fuck? All this shit, dude. So, like, I was like, okay, whatever. Anything's better than jail. So I meet my probation officer. His name is Chris Malams. Now, this dude was literally as tall as me, but it looks like he ate a bowl of steroids for breakfast. He fucking just buff ass, dude, dude. And, like, he looked like an eagle, and he was just a fucking ass asshole dude he basically was like i own you like if you fuck up once i will not hesitate to have you and like you know committed which means basically send me to prison i'm like all right dude that's cool so um i had also a surveillance officer who came and visited me every night her name is deborah and she was cool as shit um so yeah i was living that life you know okay i'm not in jail like we're good like let's do what we got to do I go to now. This is literally is what my life became. You ready? You ready for this shit? Wake up, go to school, come home. 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 It's annoying, right? Fucking try living it, dude. I was like, dude, this fucking sucks. I hated being at home as much as it was. Now I'm stuck here and I can't do anything. So I found a loophole in this fucking, this shit. So I could stay in school after hours if I was signed up for an uh, extra testicular class, a club. So I was like, I need to sign up for either a sport or a club. I don't want to fucking play football. I don't want to fucking play tennis or basketball. I just want to do hood rat shit with my friends. So I, you know, gather my clique of friends and I'm like, Yo, what club can we sign up for? And like, we can all chill out after school together. And like, which club has the cutest girls? And they're like, yo, anime club, dude. Sign up for anime club. I'm like, whack, but okay. So we all sign up for anime club. So now I can stay after school. Um, so that's what, you know, we do. We fucking got out of school, fucking went to the anime club, signed in. So it shows that we were there. Then we, you know, talk to chicks or just fucking ditch. And um, I found another loophole through this thing. A fucking football game is also a school activity. So if I'm going and showing support for my high school, I'm good. So I was using that to my advantage, and it made life a little bit fucking easier. Um, Now, during this period of time, this is where I get super serious, my grandpa, my grandfather, uh, was diagnosed with basically terminal cancer, lung cancer. And that kind of took a toll on me when I found out about it. Couldn't sleep at night. You know, just tossed and turned. I was very, very much destroyed about it. So I was like, you know, fuck this, dude. I want to walk. Like, I just need to walk and think. So I snuck out of my house. You know, I was scared shitless doing this because my parents found out I would have been, they would have called the police on me, yo. So I fucking left my house and just like went on like a good four hour walk through the night. Just nowhere. Just walking in, you know, desert fields and shit like that. Just thinking about shit. Like, man, my life sucks. Like, now my grandpa's sick. Like, fuck dude and then i went home snuck back in went back to bed laid in bed and was like holy shit that was so easy no one knows i left huh and that is what kind of started my fuck up like yo i can sneak out of this bitch right so i started sneaking out at night and like hanging out with friends or you know hooking up with you know chicks or whatever fucking you know doing fucking teenage shit 
Now my, I went, I don't remember if it was Halloween or something. I went somewhere, some holiday to go visit my cousin. And now this kid growing up is, um, you know, always, always had a gun. Like literally this kid was shooting guns like four years fucking old. Um, and was always into like fucking like explosives and shit like that. So I went to his house and he showed me how to make a works bomb, which is basically toilet cleaner and a side of a bottle and you put tin foil balls in it, you close it and then it creates gas that expands and blows up. This shit's louder than a shotgun. And it was the most awesome thing I've ever seen in the world. And he's like, dude, literally it costs like fucking $5. You can make like 50 of these fucking things. So we spent all night fucking blowing shit up. Like, well, not blowing shit up because it's not like a fire bomb. It's just like a, like a gas bomb. Um, we we're just, I was like, dude, this is super fucking cool. I like, yeah, dude, like I like this shit. So I, out of boredom, started setting off these fucking bombs, basically. I uh, started showing all my friends these bombs. Um, sneaking out, like, yo, like, yo, guys, I'm gonna sneak out tonight. Like, I got four bottles of the works. Like, I got a bunch of water bottles and ten foil. Like, like, let's go, like, make some noise. So every night we'd go out, set shit off, boom, 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 blowing shit up, blowing shit up, fucking, fucking with people, putting it in front of their, like, in their yard. They blow up and, like, it's just it's fo- so fucking loud, dude. Literally at the end of the night, my ears would be ringing. So this is probably, I was probably six months into my probation at this point in time. Um, one night, one faithful fucking night, my parents were both working graveyard shift, which means they were not coming home. My sister was away at college and my little brother was home and I was, you know, taking care of him, whatever. I didn't want to be there. It was fucking boring. I wanted to go fucking do more hood chat, hood rat shit with my friends. So I fucking told him, Hey dude, you want to come hang out with me and my friends? And you know, being a little brother, like that's the coolest thing in the world to someone. Like, yeah, I like that. All right, cool. You can't tell mom and dad that we left. Now I had a car. Um, well, we had. It wasn't my car at the time. It became my car later. Whatever. Um, but we had a, a possession of a fucking vehicle. So I was like, Yo, we're gonna pick up some friends. So we pick up a couple of my boys. Um, we're driving around, setting off works bombs and stuff. So I get the fucking fantastic idea. Hey, let's go prank one of our friends and drop it in front of their house. I'm like, all right, cool. So we drive up. You know, I have it all set up. All I need to do is drop the tin foil in there. Drop the tin foil. You know, we're driving by their house. I throw it out the window. Whoop, not even paying attention. Probably going 10, 15 miles an hour. Whoop, dropped it in their yard. We drove off, parked down the street. Boom! Louder, like, oh shit, it's lit. And we drive off, right? I set off a couple more. I'm like, all right, dudes, we need to, you know, we should get going. I drop everyone off, go back to my house with my little brother. Now, I get a text message from the person's, the person that we set that, their, that person we pranked. I get a text message, like, what the fuck did you do to my house? I'm like, nothing. I didn't do anything. <laughs> it's like, well, um, we heard a loud bang. We came outside. And now there's a lot of paint melted off my parents' car. And I he- heard from, you know, Patrick that you set off these fucking bombs. Like, what the fuck? I'm like, ah, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, well, regardless, a cop's coming to your house right now because my parents thinks it's you. I'm like, oh, shit. That's not, that's not cool, yo. That's definitely not cool. Um, so, like, right when I, like, read that text, I look up at my window and I see a spotlight, like, shimmer over my window. I look outside and I see a fucking police officer your police unit so i run in my brother's room i'm I'm like dude my first i like my first thought was i need to fucking strip down dude i need to like take my clothes off to make it look like i'm lounging around still had shoes on still had a jacket on so i just rip my clothes off run in my brother's room i'm like dude the cops are here don't freak out don't freak out all you have to tell them is that we did not leave here okay just tell them we've been sitting around playing xbox if if they talk to you like trust me like i got this shit and he's like okay so Knock, knock, knock. Uh, who is it? Oh, uh, this is, uh, Meth Pipe, Arizona Police. Uh, can you please open the door? I'm like, yeah, I open the door. I'm there in my boxers. I'm like, hi, officer, is there a problem? He's like, yeah, are you, uh, Icarus Forido? I'm like, yeah, that's me, dude. Peace, love, and smoke TNT. Um, and he's like, okay, well, there was a disturbance at, you know, asshole's house. And, you know, someone set off a device that melted the paint on, um, their parents' car. And when asked who do you think might have done this? They immediately pointed to you. Like, oh, what? That's, that's, a, that's preposterous, officer. It could not have been me. I am on intense probation. I cannot leave my house. I'm babysitting my little brother. And we've been here the whole time. You want to ask him? He's like, yeah, I do. All right. 
hey, little brother, come in here. So my little brother walks in and he's also stripped down, basically naked. So he took the initiative, shout out to you, bro. He comes in like, hey, and he's like, is this your brother? And he's like, yeah. Officer says to him, have you guys been here the whole time? He, ha you ha he hasn't left or left your site? He's like, no, we've been playing uh, um, Xbox you know, all night, just been chilling. So the officer's like, okay, well, to be honest, man, I really didn't think it was you, but if you hear anything, here's my card, give me a call. I'm like, all right, cool. So we shut the door, he leaves, we're all good to go. I run to my brother, I'm like, dude, you did so good, I'm proud of you, man, I'm proud of you, thank you, thank you. And we start laughing, like, yo, we melted the paint on the car, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> this is where it sucks. So, <laughs> about maybe a week later, um, one of the people I was with who helped, who was with, I was, how do I explain this? One of the guys I was with was also friends with that person that we set the bomb off. That person helped the, him set up his MySpace page. So they knew his password. So they get on his MySpace page pretending to be him and starts talking to me about the fucking incident. My dumbass starts talking about it. Yeah, dude, no, the cop came over here and I was like, nah, dude, we didn't do it. And like, bro, like, I can't believe we melted the paint on the car and all that, dude, I'm fucking admitting all of it to this person. And uh, fast forward, maybe like two days after that conversation, I'm laying in bed, I was watching Norbit and it was the day before school started for the new year, I had all my clothes picked out and shit. I see that spotlight on my window again. And I'm like, oh, fuck. And I walk up, I fucking look out the window, there's that cop car. Knock, knock, knock. I run up, answer the door, I'm like, yeah? And he's like, hey, can I speak to your parents? I'm like, fuck, now my parents are home. So I'm like, okay. So I go get my parents, some fucking heart is doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm listening through my window and I can hear, yeah, we have uh, text messages from your son uh, basically admitting his involvement in uh, the incident that happened. Uh, well, they explained to him what happened. I never fucking told my parents the cops came or anything like that. So um, like this and that. So my mom calls me, get the fuck out here. So I get out there. Um, she's shaking her head at me. I go out to the fucking dogs, dude. The cops are like, yeah, we know you did it and this and that. So I bre like, I just fucking broke down. Like, all right, yeah, I did it. You know what? It was a fucking prank. Like, it wasn't supposed to happen like that. Yo, I'm getting thousands of dollars when I turn 18 because I'm Native American, bro. Like, I can pay that shit back, dude. Like, please, dude, don't do this. It's like, yeah, man. Turn around, put your hands behind your back. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. If you can't afford an attorney, one will be appointed to you. Do you understand this shit? Yes. Take me in the back seat of the car, dude, and I start breaking down because now, like, my grandpa's sick, yo. I'm arrested. I'm on probation. This is going to be fucked up. They take me to downtown, question me, and I'm like, dude, look, like, I can't believe that, you know, like, I didn't mean to do this. This is not supposed to happen. Like, this, it fucked up. And they're like, regardless, man, like, you are on probation. You're not supposed to leave your house. And now you have another felony of criminal damage over, you know, the amount of however many thousands of dollars worth of paint we ruined. So the cop leaves and usually at that point when I get questioned, the cop comes back and he says, you guys, you ready to go? And then I get released to my parents. So he comes back, he's like, you ready to go? I'm like, oh, thank God, yeah. Where are we going? He's like, you're going to jail, boy. I'm like, yo, I'm going to jail? Like, what the fuck? And he's like, yep. So they handcuffed me and the cop that took me, coincidentally, was the same cop that arrested me for that fucking knife. We go in the elevator, get down. He puts me in the back of a cop car. I fucking hit my head against the plastic. And that is to be continued. This was episode one of my incarceration story. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, episode two is going to be coming out very soon. So be sure to be on the lookout. Follow me guys on Instagram, Icarus Forido, just like you see here, just mashed together as one word, Icarus Forido. That's where you'll find my live streams because I'm still in YouTube jail and you know, your day to day icky updates and memes and all that funny shit. So yeah, man, I hope you guys enjoyed this shit. It, pfft, yeah. So, take care. Until next time, I'm your fearless leader, and you guys always know where to find me. Just jump down the rabbit hole, take a left at the Land of Oz, 
from there it's second star to the right and straight on till morning you're gonna find yourself in this weird state of consciousness before actually falling asleep and dreaming and that my friends as well i always love you until next time baby peace love and smoke that dmt